Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Cultivate by Pops and Bijou Games. This is a 2-5 player board game that takes roughly 20-50 to 50 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Cultivate, you are a cult leader attempting to cultivate a following. You are going to be getting a compound where you're going to um, gain a menagerie of different cult-like followers and you're going to fill this up if possible. All while at the same time you'll have certain agendas that you're going to try to meet and you're going to try to select one of these guys to complete by the end of the game. When one player's cult board is filled up with cultists, you're then going to give everybody one more turn and you'll see who scores the most points. Check the points based on your board and your agenda and any bonuses you might get. And if you scored the most points, you are the most famous cult leader of them all. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, our review. The setup for Cultivate is actually quite simple. First, determine the number of players that you're playing with, and then change the cards in the deck based on the number of players. Give every single player a compound board and a player board. Then, each player is going to choose an agenda on their game board in clockwise order. You can choose the top, middle, or bottom agenda. After you have done so, make sure that you take all the investigators out of the deck and then deal four cards to each player that's playing the game. After you have dealt your four cards out to each player, put the rest of the investigators back in the game, whether it be three for an easy game, four for a normal, or five for the harder mode. After that, the deck is shuffled, all the followers are placed out within reach, and any compound board or cult leader board that you're not using in the game is set aside. Then, basically, you're ready to begin the game, select a starting player, and go around clockwise taking the actions. Okay, let's talk about now how to take those actions. Playing the game Cultivate is actually quite simple. There are only three main actions that you can take. One, play a card from your hand. Two, you can go ahead and exchange your cultists for other cultists. And three, you can discard any number of cards from your hand to draw up to your max hand size, and then after you choose one of these things, you will pass. Let's talk about the different actions that you can take and the rules and requirements. The first action being playing a card from your hand. There are multiple cards in the game. You may select any card in your hand to play and you can do whatever that card says. Most of them are simply going to allow you to choose a cultist from this area here and place it on your game board. I'll go ahead and host a gala, which will allow me to gain a celebrity. When placing cultists, you must place them on your cult board or your, your compound area. And when you place, you have to make sure that you follow the main rule. You can place on any of the top spaces of your compound, and you can also place your characters or your cultists in any space as long as there is a cultist above it. So in the beginning of the game, you're only gonna have the top four spaces to choose from. But if I were to place a cultist in maybe the top left-hand space here, whenever I place a new cultist, I can choose any of the other top three here or the next space down below, thusly allowing me to continue to make different uh, cultists be placed in different areas of the game board. Additionally, the very bottom of your compound board is actually gonna have colors and each of them are going to be a little different. And as you can see there, are both front and back. These colors are going to represent the different types of cultists you must put there. Additionally, when you place a cultist here, they are locked, meaning they cannot be messed with. And you'll gain the bonus on the bottom of the specific card you're utilizing. For instance, placing an orange cultist here is going to give you the ability to hijack, where you gain two bonus points at the end of the game. And that's pretty much how playing a card works. Uh, discarding, like I said, you can discard the number of cards in your hand and draw back up to that many. And finally, the exchange. Well, there are three main types of exchanges. You can exchange a three for a three character, or a two for a two, or a one for a one. You can exchange a three character for any combination thereof, so like a two character and a one character. And you can exchange multiple characters, let's say a uh, three or a two and a one to get a three character. So you're going to be able to exchange them. But remember, placement rules are as follows. You can only place as long as you have a cultist that is above the other previously played cultists. Um, and that's pretty much how the game is gonna work. You'll take one of the three main actions, playing a card and then drawing a card, discarding cards and then drawing back up cards, and finally making an exchange and pass. And the next player is going to go. And they'll continue going along that way. 
There are a few little hijinks in the game that you're going to run into, and one of them is going to be the Investigator. When you get this card, unfortunately, from the draw deck here, you're going to place an Investigator in your compound, and you must play this card immediately. Investigators follow the same rule as far as placement goes, however, you do not want them to be in the board because if they're on your board, you cannot place cultists underneath them, and at the end of the game, they're going to score you negative points. There are cards in the game that let you exchange them. You can also use the exchange action to remove your cultists to get rid of investigators, putting them back into the pool, and of course, because this deck shuffles back whenever you run out of cards, these investigators are going to be continuously coming out throughout the entire game. Some other bonuses here to talk about, like for instance your agenda board. When you choose one of your agendas, you're going to try and meet the requirements. Like for instance, this middle requirement here is having these specific blue cultists in this specific diagram here, and when the game ends, if you happen to have this, you will score the number of points based on the value on your board here. Uh, the game ends when somebody fills their board. When somebody fills their compound board, then each other player will take one turn. After that, you're going to score points. You will score points for each cultist on your game board based on their value on the bottom of your agenda board. You will score uh, points if you successfully accomplish the one agenda that you chose of the three. And you can score a bonus for having all of your board fully filled in. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Yep, it's that simple, that's straightforward, but there's a lot of complexity and we'll talk about it now. Cultivate a game is about securing a cult following, filling your compound full of cultists, whether they be scientists, celebrities, politicians, or even just the youth or a drifter. It doesn't really matter as long as you get them on your game board. Now, of course, some of these guys are worth more points than others, and certain uh, types of agendas that you're going to try to succeed at, so for instance, you can poach the vote, which you will then need to get politicians, uh, might be more challenging, but you'll score more points in the long run. Maybe an arrow-minded will allow you to gain scientists and score points. And then finally, maybe a child life over wildlife agenda, where you're going to have a lot of youth and a lot of activists. And meeting these requirements is very important. I would say for, for a fact, if you do not secure your agenda, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to win the game. Additionally, making sure you fill your board is important because there's bonuses for filling your board and having more of the characters on your board is going to help you with the game and help you score. Um, to note too, investigators are worth negative points, but sometimes they can come in handy when you need them in order to fill your game board fast before somebody else is likely to win the game. These cards here are all pretty straightforward. You're either going to be using a pink one to gain a pink cult follower, or maybe a blue one for a blue one. Um, there's going to be a yellow for a yellow. And then you have unique cards, like assign a new task. You can move a follower or switch positions of two followers within the same compound. So this can be helpful to use on your own specific compound, allowing you to gain the requirements you might have missed when placing down for your agenda. Uh, there is a wide variety of different things you can do, like offer a place to stay, where you'll gain a drifter, or you can gain a youth follower, which means you can choose one of two different types of the different types of cultists. Uh, you can convert a follower of a rival. You can steal a rival from another player. And as long as you always follow the placement rules, no big deal. Investigators, like I said, are nasty. Or, of course, if you need to, you can use political influence to block any card at, in play at any time. The main rule of this game as well, when you're playing any type of instant cards or cards in general, is you're always going to draw back up to your maximum hand size, which is four. However, if you happen to have the mastermind achievement done on your game board, your hand size will go from four to five cards. There are four main different specific abilities you can gain when you manage to place those different types of cultists in their specifically colored areas of the compound. Hijack is going to gain you two bonus points at the end of the game, just an extra bonus. Manipulate will make you a uh, uh, be able to exchange twice, but you don't do it cumulatively, you do them separately. So I can exchange my three for a two and a one, and then I can make another exchange, where maybe I use that two I gain from the exchange with the three, and I go ahead and take another one, and I get a new three. I can also exchange a three for a three and a two for a two, as long as I make two exchanges, I, I, don't, I do them separately. So I can't add a one, a one, and a one to get a three, um, or like I can't, I can't, I can't cumulatively take all of them and make it so I can change it. There's certain ways where it works, but as long as you understand what I'm saying is to make two separate exchanges of the three different types. Uh, there's the, of course, mastermind where you gain your hand size, and yeah, and then blackmail where you can exchange two points to remove an investigator. Normally, it takes 
four points to remove an investigator. You'll literally have to take cultists off your game board to remove an investigator worth four points. But with blackmail, it's only gonna cost you two. And there are of course other ways that you can get rid of investigators or move them onto other players' boards in the cards in the deck. Uh, this game has some really beautiful pieces. First of all, you have these really cool little cultists that all have their own uh, little feature, different type of characters. So as you can see, the hobo's kind of looking a little drab and a, a few holes in his clothing and, and the investigator looks like a private eye. Uh, the celebrities look like they're kind of uh, <laughs> set and fancy and so on and so forth. Each of the characters are kind of different. You have politicians and celebrities, scientists, academics, activists, drifters, youth, and of course investigators, quite a few of them actually, and each of the agendas work alongside with the different types of cults, cultists that you can gain. So, you know, of course, of course, of course poaching the vote is going to require you to gain celebrities, and they all have their own kind of idea as to what each of the different cults are going to be kind of like. And of course the back is actually going to be your character, so there's some details on that as well. Being able to choose your agenda is nice because you can kind of set what you think you're going to be able to succeed at. Is it easier to gain a bunch of low point value characters? And maybe people will mess with you less or you're only going to need a certain number of high value characters but you have to keep them on the game board by the time your board locks because remember once your board locks no one can fiddle with you so the only things people can fiddle with are when your board is not locked they can fiddle with any of the top three by four never the bottom here. And if your board is completely locked, like you've placed all your characters down, then no one can mess with anything, which is actually a really cool rule to not make the game last quite some time. I also like the fact that each of the compound boards are separate and they have different types of coloration on the bottom, allowing you to manipulate what type of board that you want to use when you get to select. So there's a lot of selection when it comes to this game. Uh, the cult deck, this deck here of different things that you can play and place down as you move along throughout the game is very simple. Reading each card, if you read the card you'll understand the card it's almost a guarantee and this game is basically like a party game it plays up to five players which is a nice set of plays and when we started playing this game with a bunch of new friends who actually hadn't played board gaming before or a lot of modern games before they love this game we actually play this quite some time i think we played this three times in a row for new game night normally we play one game of each different type that i go through um just once for these people because they're newer but these guys really really enjoyed this one they had a lot of fun with this one so we kept playing it this this game is a take that game. You can be aggressive or overly aggressive to one player utilizing all your cards. There's no specific set rules for this game. It's more of a socially based condition system where it's like, okay, Mike is ahead, we'll mess with Mike. Ah, Bill is now ahead, now we'll mess with Bill. Because it's always your objective to try and stay within the running. If you're ahead, you're trying to push ahead and lock your board before somebody can mess with you. And hand management is important. Being able to hold on to the cards that allow you to block players from playing cards against you is going to be very useful because none of the actions in general are going to be allowed to allow people to mess with you. But the cards in the game do, and vetoing is very important when you need to utilize that. Sometimes you'll need to actually sacrifice some value in order to end the game. But remember, don't end the game in, in, in lieu of actually winning the game. Because just because you end the game or fill your board up does not mean you're going to win. If you fill the board up and you've got investigators and you didn't finish your objective, uh, you're probably not going to win, even if somebody else that did not fill their board up um, at the end of the game, like they, they're gonna be able to score their agenda. Maybe they got a bunch of three point characters on their board. So there's a lot of thought into the game. And yes, you need to actually look at your opponent's boards, see what they're trying to do, see what agendas they want, see what pieces they want. And not only that, but there's a placement rule about when you select your agendas. And as you place to select your agenda, you'll have to actually see what other people are choosing because if everyone is choosing yellow, it's not a good idea to choose yellow because it's very unlikely you'll, you'll get to finish it because these pieces are limited. And based on the number of players in the game, they are removed. So just keep all that in mind. This game has a really cool little art style with it. The theme works very well as well. And it's a lot of fun. This is a family game. This is a straightforward shooter type of game. I really, really enjoyed this one. I would say if you're looking for something super deep and strategic, uh, this is probably not that one. This is gonna be more on that take that feel. It's gonna be more of like a policing your own type of a thing where you're watching somebody get too big for their britches and you have to kind of push them back down. Um, and it is likely that some people might get upset 
upset. Maybe they're, do, they're getting too, or doing too well, it just so happens they get the good cards, and people are gonna pick on them because they have to, because they're winning, and you don't want them to win before you can fill your board up. And those are things that can happen in this type of game. But overall, if you're looking for a fun, stylish type party game with tableau management and cool choices along the way, as well as some fun cards that are involved with either strategically placing characters into your compound or using them to foible your opponents, then Cultivate is one I would strongly su strongly suggest for you to take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cultivate by Pops and Beiju. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description of the game is currently on Amazon. You can also go to our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. And in fact, this one is not unlikely for us to play this Sunday. And of course, our whatnot streams every other Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to creating a cult with you next time.